Joining us on today's episode is previous guest on the show. When you get a chance, check out episode number 48, Yoga and Removing the Concept of Other. I introduce to you the lovely Leslie Jordan Garcia. Hey, Leslie. Hi, how are you doing today, Ashley? So good to see you again. And thank so you good to see you talking to me again. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy to have you back on the show. We had a blast last time. Would you want to introduce yourself a little bit more? Tell us who you are, your business, what you're about. Sure. Um, like you said, I am the lovely Leslie Jordan Garcia. And I um, am a side hustler of sorts. I own and I'm getting off the ground um, a health and wellness fitness creation and coaching business on the side. And it is called Fierce Fitness ATX because we are in the ATX physically anyway. Um, and so that is what I do. It, I am a haze informed, a haze in line, body positive, um, body liberator. Mm. So that is, that is my message. That is my target audience uh, generally. People who have experienced fitness or wellness in a marginalized body mm. um, i just want to seek some joyful movement and some advice that's not about shaming it's about complete acceptance 100 percent of all possible human you know manifestations in a physical body so everyone is welcome um, in my classes and the classes are specifically designed to create that atmosphere of welcoming for for people of color, for um, non-binary people, for people who are in wheelchairs, people with amputees, people with diminished capacity in any way, form in their mind. But I show them that there is no diminished capacity. You show up how you are, you are 100% accepted in this club. So. That is so beautiful. So truly inclusive. You teach um, to all bodies in an inclusive way. A, in an empowering way. And I would say that I'm more than inclusive. Um, inclusive means that I'm welcoming to all, but more than that, I literally curate and design my classes with those bodies in mind. So mm. it's, I have, we have to be able to celebrate those bodies. It is a true celebration. Yes. So. I, th I think that's wonderful. And that's so needed. And it's so, um, it's needed in the world because it's not super like I don't know many people who do that. So thank you. That is amazing. Uh, let's talk about fierceness. Uh, so today's episode is called yoga and fierceness and fierceness is the name of your business or in, in the name of your business. Yes. So what, is fierce, what does fierceness mean to you? Why do you resonate with uh, that word so much? So for me, you know, I feel like it's, it speaks to the ability and the innate passion and light and fire within all of us to fight to find that place where we fully belong and are accepted what we bring at that moment. Um, and so for me, naming my business Fierce Fitness, um, it's not about weight loss. It's not about how your body looks. It's about embracing that quality that I am strong and my body is strong and I'm not impervious. I'm not, you know, some immalleable thing that you cannot ever penetrate. I'm strong because I am resilient and can withstand <laughs> the things that you throw at me. And I think that all bodies do that. And, and to me, fitness, you know, that's just the ability to thrive. So I think I am fighting fiercely for my ability to thrive and, and nurture who I am and, you know, and be, and be respected and stand on that and do that for other people. So that is why that name is fierce. I like that. And I like how you highlight that you're strong, but you're not impervious. I think that is a really wonderful way to look at that word. Yes. How do you, so you've already touched on it a bit, um, but would you want to elaborate more on how you change people's perceptions on fitness exactly? Yeah, you know, this is a this is um, a good question, and I think that you and I both being 
in Austin, you know, the fix, right? <laughs> of, yeah. I think that fitness and, and, and that in the traditional sense of the word is actually quite narrow. So, so for me, I wanted to expand on that concept and let it be known that fitness is something that is, it's not a end point, a terminal point. It is a continuum and it changes and it changes daily. Um, and, and it's accessible to everybody. There is no one size um, fits all formula when it comes to fitness. Um, you can always work towards it and you can't accurately gauge someone's fitness by looking at their body. Mm. You know, I mean, I could, I could go on and name people that I'm just like that chick or that dude right there, they're fit, you know, um, I, you know, I think we talked about Lizzo last time. She's kind of, you know, if elephants really weren't my totem animal, which they are, you know, uh, Lizzo would be a, a close second. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, elephant, elephant's my totem animal too. But, it, but, but look <laughs> at an elephant. I'm, I'm going to go with my babies, those elephants. They look big, they're in large bodies, they're heavy, they're dense, and people don't realize how fit they are. They, they survive. They, they don't have natural predators. <laughs> they are at the top, even though they don't eat meat, but they're at the top of the chain. You've got to have, you know, a gang of folks, if you want to try to take down a full grown elephant, they're also able to traverse for miles, for kilometers with, you know, without their bodies withstand that. So that is something about fitness. Larger bodies can be fit. If you think you can outdance Lizzo, if you ever, if you were here at ACL in six inch heels and two hour shows and she's dancing and singing and doing both of them well, she's not breathy. She is together. You yeah. You know what I'm saying? That is fitness, you know, despite what society would tell us about the look or appearance of her body. That chick is fit. So those are the types of things that I want to highlight. Mm, I think that. And to piggyback off of what you're saying, I work at a climbing gym and I used to think climbers were all one type of person, one type of body. And mm -hmm. I actually looked around the other day and looked at all the different ages, the different shapes of the bodies the different, like what you're saying, like people who necessarily, I mean, they're incredibly strong and you wouldn't necessarily, or I didn't put it together that they would be quote unquote a climber. Right. And you never know. You never know. They're like, you everybody. never know. The human body is amazing. <laughs> and really? it comes in all shapes, sizes. And, and, and I think that the takeaway for me and that I try to give to people is that honor your body first and when you start to do that, you will automatically start to honor other bodies and be amazed. And there's 7 billion people on the planet. So I, I can be amazed 7 billion times. So, you know, it's, it's that it's, it's, it's that easy. I love that. So what do you wish that you would have known when you started out your career as a fitness coach, movement educator? What advice would you give someone starting out, I guess? Oh, wow. I think what I wish I had known when I started out um, about, about, let's see, my daughter will be 20 next week. So about 13 years ago, I would say um, that that, fierce, that fierceness that is already there, it's already within you. And I think what for me took me years to learn, I wish I knew starting off was that my, I am my own body's expert and I should concentrate my efforts in listening to my body and, and just knowing that my, I know what's best for my body, you know, in a, in, in a, in a general sense and, you know, in a very specific sense. And I think that I would have trusted my body's wisdom uh, a whole lot sooner <laughs> than, than, than years of trying something to fit into some other mold that just wasn't the mold that my body was, you know, planned on. I love that answer. And this, this ties in a little bit into my next question. Um, loosely tying all this back to yoga. How does yoga relate to fierceness? <laughs> There's no loose tie. It's very tightly tied because for me, uh, Beginning a yoga, uh, you know, I call it, you know, yoga of the four shapes. That's that's my style of yoga. You know, I'm not 
not the girl. I am. I'm gonna lay here. I'm gonna roll over. I'm gonna breathe. I'm gonna roll back over. I need this bolster. This block. You know, I'll, I'm that girl. I'm that. <laughs> The yoga of the four shapes. Um, that is me uh, when I'm on my mat. But it was on my mat. It was through yoga that I was able to listen to my body and reconnect with my body. So for me, mm. tapping into that inner fierceness is tightly tied to yoga. If it had not been um, me seeking some other type of restorative practice, then that's literally what brought me to yoga was pounding and not getting anywhere I'm pounding my body and not getting anywhere. So mm-hmm. for me, yoga is where I found that fitness. So it's a very tight tie. And I think that that is something um, that I grapple with, like with yoga and, you know, all the talk about cultural appropriation. And, and for me, yoga was a spiritual experience, even before I really learned about the spiritual history. So that is, that is where, where I became more of a whole person. So mm. at the time, and I think that, um, I think that yoga can do that for anybody um, because at some point, you know, w- what I like about yoga is that every pose, even if you only do four, um, there's an edge, right? There comes to a point to where you can always get to a new edge and, and experience a new or different sensation. And I think that as you, become curious or want to know like, oh, what's that? Or how do I get past that? Or how can I deepen this? Or how can I do this? You naturally start to learn more about um, yoga in a holistic spiritual sense. You, you're going to be, you're going to read things. You're going to see things. You're going to, you know, traverse to, to, you know, India if you're able and you're going to do all these things. And I think that is where you, if you don't come to yoga as a whole spiritual practice, you can certainly get there. So, and I think that um, people um, should know that about yoga, you know. So I just think that it's a, it is a very beautiful, deep, life-changing practice as it should be and, and, and as it always has been. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I like how you're saying that it, it sounds like it's kind of sparks an inquisitive curiosity uh, naturally. And so you seek, like, oh, I'm doing this pose and it, there's something kind of mysterious about it. And then, yes. and then there's, there's these ancient texts, you know, the, um, Yama, Niyamas, Yamas, Yamas, yeah, Bhagavad Gita. All that. Yeah, you know, all that. Why am I doing triangle pose? And then there's, you know, a Niyama over here. What does a Niyama even mean? Like what is right. going on? And so, and I, that's what I love about yoga is there's a richness and, you know, you, to, you touched on kind of the, then, you know, the negative, the toxic yoga culture, uh, it, it, I, I talked to so many people and they're, you know, they're like, I was into yoga and then I got turned off because of the culture. And it's just so sad to me, but hopefully, hopefully it is going to slowly shift. Um, but that is just so sad that, that that's what I always hear people say. Um, right. Yeah. You're into yoga. And I think that, <laughs> As a humans, right, we like to practice yoga singly or, you know, solitary. My, my practice is generally solitary because I need that spiritual, I need time with my spirit. And that's where I get it a lot of times. Mm-hmm. But I enjoy yoga classes and yoga gatherings. You know, I like a, you know, a, social, a more social practice. Um, yeah, the, the, the culture of yoga, of course, that could be a whole nother podcast. But yeah, I think though it, it is reflective of the Western um, diet culture and, and also the, the Western need to appropriate things and make them fit into their narrow scope. But that, that also to me segues into bodies (laughs) and, and the inherited, uh, the inherent beauty and value and diversity of bodies. So, so they parallel that, that narrow mind, you know, like if you're not, this size, or if you have a number on a scale that is outside of this range, or if your waist circumference is outside of this range, you cannot be fit. You cannot be healthy. You know, like, so it's that same type of um, narrow, narrow scope and scope. And it's all based in, you know, colonial thought. We, I mean, colonial patriarchy, 
Um, it's control. Girl, it's, it's please control. don't give me time. When you said yeah. patriarchy and control, <laughs> that that's bodies. That's all, and especially the control and obedience of women. Like oh. why you need to look this way, and you can't diet. You need to be more obedient. Girl, don't get me started on that. <laughs> And a whole nother post. Mm. I come I come from Pilates culture. So it's oh, like wow. it's, it's yoga, but like ten times. I mean it, it's the mo- it I, I love Pilates, but it's the culture I don't love. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. I it, it's slowly, slowly changing. Uh, it's a little bit it's a little bit more late. rigid. It's even more rigid than yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about your Patreon and then we can come back to this subject. Uh, you just started a Patreon. I did. Barely. And then share with us your offerings and then what inspired you to put it online. Sure. So I, I have started, um, a Patreon membership as people who may don't know what Patreon is. It's a membership site or vehicle platform if you will, for creators. So um, as a fitness content creator, um, I was looking to put some classes out um, into that space that, um, especially as COVID numbers have climbed and people are at home and are comfortable at home. And, you know, I said, well, if people are at need to be in their homes. So how do I get to all these people's homes? Oh, Patreon. Um, so that, that was really the catalyst. I have had friends that through my live classes, if you will, for the YMCA and for some other small studios like FemPower, um, out of Austin, right? So they can't see me and they're just like, how do I see these videos? Or when are you going to make new videos? Because I've had some things on um uh, YouTube for years, and I just am very slow to update them. But it got to a point to where um, I thought, well, I need to generate a little money. I, you know, I'm not going to get rich on Patreon, but it does um, well, help me uh, carve out that time. And huh? Well, well yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's true. I don't ever know, and I don't want to limit myself by speaking that. But you know. I would like to get rich on Patreon. Let me say it like that. Like this, is, so so for me, eventually shifting into this this space because it ties naturally into my my education background, um, and also into my passion about diversity. And so when I talk about diversity and equity, I mean in every single space. And the equity, if you're in a marginalized body, it, if you're in a fat body you're marginalized and if you're in a fat black body oh gosh you know don't be in a fat black body that has had a leg cut off because you're in a whole nother you know so so these are all intersections and so I wanted to be able to bring something fun and lighthearted and and hopefully useful and transformational to people through this um platform so that's what motivated me to launch this platform literally tomorrow will be one week ago <laughs> So, so it is hot off the press. Um, yeah, it is. It is very exciting. It's also, you know, all the other things. It's frightening. It's nerve wracking. It's overwhelming. You know, it's like you're you're worried about how you'll be received or if if you anyone will ever find you. You know, so to speak. So it's amazing. Um, just what a little publicity about um, honoring all bodies has done for my Instagram account. Like I am DM by people saying, well, you know, if you're fat, you're going to die. And I was like, just being thin guarantee immortality. I'm confused. I am on board. If that's what that means, you know, like different, different. It's just, I, and I'm like, people, people did that. People did that. Or, oh yeah. Yes. And I, I have like a hundred followers, like, oh, like on my fitness when I have like maybe 300 followers and it's grown. And on my coaching site, I literally first of December had like 20 people. So I'm like close to a hundred now. And that's the kind of thing I'm getting. So I'm just like, Oh, well, okay. Well, people are finding me. and I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'm like, I mean, you know, so it's, so it's, so it's funny to me um, how deeply ingrained some of these concepts are with people. I mean, gee, we just seen what happened in our country as we, as oh my- elected you know so I mean I know. yeah what are you 
curious but, about right now. Um, and we can talk about, we could go back to that conversation about cultural appropriation or whatever it is you're curious. Wow. So I am a perpetually curious person. So it's, this is a, this sounds like an easy, fun question, but it's just like, what am I curious about? I am. I'm also, I'm always curious about, um, cultural appropriation in yoga. This is a very interesting topic to me as I uh, endeavor to educate myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, oh my gosh. Anyway, that that is super just curious. Like I'm reading and I'm not reading enough because there's not enough information about it. You know what I'm saying? It isn't. That is changing, but it's just like, ah, you know, that was a good thought. And there's some really awesome um, Indian yoga instructors and cultural, you know, sociologists talking about this and spiritual people talking about it. So it's, so the conversation has gotten juicy really quickly, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also really curious uh, naturally about equity work. Uh, On a lighter note, I would say I'm really curious these days about cryotherapy. And if I'm if I'm going to be bold enough to take the plunge, I don't like cold. Anything below 60 degrees is freezing. So trying to work my mind around standing intentionally, like on purpose, and negative, you know, whatever, 200 degrees for three minutes. I'm like, am I that curious? <laughs> <laughs> um, and also probably sensory deprivation. Like that's something that I would really like to experience. And um, I'm very curious about just, just about that whole experience. So on a lighter note, some of those things. Very cool. Have you heard of the podcast Yoga is Dead? Yes. I love that podcast. I've listened to every episode, but um, it's, that's, that's like one little sliver of information. Yes. There's more, but yeah, you're right. There isn't enough. Yeah. But there, those chicks are deep, man. They keep it real. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, they're very, I mean, they're good. There's interesting podcasts and, you know, um, I, I, I opt for podcasts these days over TV. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm listening to trying to find something there. There's, there's so many good ones. And so it's, uh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm toying with the idea of jumping out there as far as, um, um, body work and, you know, body positivity work and just talking about some of these topics and, you know, it, it will there will there ever be acceptance? I mean, I guess not a hundred percent. People are wired how they are and pass on whatever um, mindsets and beliefs that they do. But I just you know coming to a place of just more acceptance. You know, mm-hmm. totally. Uh, how do you reset personally? Oh, um, wine and wiggles. I think <laughs> that's what. <laughs> wiggles <laughs> wiggles I like to dance so this is like I like to dance it that is my joyful movement so I uh, we're always and my, I, and everyone in my house dances and it's um I'm sure you know if I wanted to be all you know political and intelligent I would tell you something about you know in Africa ancestors but you know we just always have my family has always danced and made up silly songs and and we've just always done that. So, um, that's what I do for enjoyment and comfort and all that. So it's fun. And, you know, it's just silly, silly dancing mostly, you know? Yeah. And, um, I have to say, I went to your body bliss event, which was so awesome. And I love the dancing. I mean, I've seen your videos and I, you know, you've always had really good dance moves and good music, but it was, it was extra special to see it live, you know? And I was like, am I going to keep up? I don't know. Can I keep up? Cause I'm not known for dancing. And, <laughs> and it was just, it was, it was, it was, it was fun. Cause I, it wasn't over, you know, it was, it was just enough that I, you know, it wasn't overly complicated, but it was still like fun. It's something I would never normally do. And um, do you want to talk about your body bliss event a little bit? Sure. So those, so those are, yeah, you're, you're, you're speaking the truth there at the lot. I mean, as much as I pour into videos and virtual offerings there, there, the energy of a live event um, or a live class is just, it's just different. I mean, we are social animals. So, so it is, it is different. And I think that of course, you know, I'm not disparaging 
choreographers because I'm amazed by some of the like dance choreography that I see. I don't care. Wildebeest, Adam, oh my God. Like who, I can't articulate my mind with that at all. So when people come to me and they say, oh, hip hop music, they think they're expecting a choreography or some kind, you know, we're fixing to become Beyonce. No, not in my class. We're not. You we can channel that, but that's not what this choreography is about. This choreography is truly accessible. And when I say for all bodies, I mean bodies that are two left feet, bodies that, you know, <laughs> all the bodies, you know, like it doesn't matter. Because to me, when I tell you that I am a movement educator and my philosophy is that the movement should be joyful. I mean, yes. I mean, it should be complex. You're in your head. You're worried about if other people are looking. If you are, you going to bump into somebody if you happen to go the wrong way. Like th- I do my best to eliminate all those obstacles and really try to meet people where they are. Hold on, just a second. I'm sorry. Um, the, um, I really do think. I'm sorry. <laughs> Life. Uh, <laughs> um really do try to make them fun and you know and if you were at the event where my daughter was there dancing my mother dancing in a chair because she's visually impaired and my younger sister was there so you see how silly we can get and I mean it's just it is and it's fun it's fun it's light it um but it also speaks to that your body is just fine your body you have mastered walking so you can do this dance class. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And the, like you said, the music is a big, you know, the music and the moves go together. Um, so for Body Bliss, I work with two other sisters, two other queens, and um, they are both traditionally trained as yoga instructors. And uh, one, Dexie is a meditation maven. Like that is her superpower. Um, that inner reflecting piece. And then Leilani, we call her professor, queen professor (laughs) because she is very, she's like a walking encyclopedia of Ayurveda and yoga and her personal story and how yoga has literally helped her regain control of her body where she could not walk is a personal story of yoga. I mean, like you have to, you, you have to talk to her. So, so all three of us have these, these, these lanes, so to speak. We are a three lane. We are a triangle. We are that Trikasana. We are without one of us, you know, you fall over. So that when we're together, um, Leilani is definitely our mind, our mind guru. She gives good information. I am the body person. And then Dexy is that spirit person. So that is how we converge. And when we are together, our goal is to give practical tools that help calm the chaos or or help calm the chaos of your mind, body, and spirit and just transform that into calm so that you are able to get through your day-to-day life. And so that is, that is what we come together and aspire to do. And, and we have a, a joyous time doing it together. So I have to say that event was the medicine I didn't know I needed. And, um, (laughs) And, you know, I had, so we had that lovely interview, the three of us in episode 48 and y'all and generously invited me to your event. And, um, you know, I had, I knew it was going to be awesome, but I had I had no real expectations because, uh, you know, it was brand new and the space that it's in is this, it just, it's not, um, it's, it's, it's not like fussy. Like it's just very, very grounded feeling. It feels very. Uh, old Austin, like in a really good way. Like that's, I'm from Austin. So I'm always like, if it's, it reminds me of old Austin, I'm like, I'm so into it, but the, the trees and then everyone there was like super cool and laid back. And then, you know, Lilani, she brought her oranges from her orange tree and, and the three of y'all, like the, the, the order in which y'all presented each, of your specialties was gorgeous. And then, um, you know, the, the bath salts, we made our own bath salts and then rolling out the traps with trap music. <laughs> that was just That's me. Brilliant, brilliant. There's just so many, I was just, it was joyous. It was joyous and it was, it was warm. And the three of y'all hold space. Like I knew, I know y'all hold space really well, but just to witness it, like, in that event 
was just a whole nother experience. And, and what I loved about it is it was just like, I could tell y'all like really thought about it. Like, like they put like so much love into it. Um, Lilani did a breath practice to like balance Vata. I, I use that till this day. Like yes. there's just so much, you know, Dexy was just so like, like you said, the meditation uh, queen, like her presence was like, you could, you just felt like more in tune with that. It was just like, it was beautiful. And so I, I just, I can't wait to, to go back and, and do another one because y'all do them for the chakras. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, due to due to COVID nineteen yeah. surging numbers in Austin, and also um, we've had some people that have tuned in to other events of ours uh, mm-hmm. virtually, and they all want that 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 in person. <laughs> so, oh, in order to accommodate that, um, you know, we wanted to give people who were desiring to be. Um, and inoculated with the vaccine to have the opportunity to have those shots given to watch some of the numbers just as a you know just as a compassionate response to the to the need that to back off of in-person events you know mm-hmm. it's from a position of privilege that we seek to come out to people so we want people to know that we honor those boundaries and that the uneasiness of just not knowing um what to expect or you know <laughs> Where is that germ looking around the corner? So we actually postponed our winter, the January, February, March event. So we will start again in April. Hopefully, you okay. know, Queen Corona will will acquiesce and, you know, we'll, we'll be down to take stage three or two even, you know, fingers yeah. crossed. And then, and then um, we do, we start with the chakras and we um, just go, go right up the main seven chakras, you know, uh, one through seven, starting with the root chakra. And again, like you said, you're still using those breathing tools and, and sometimes, you know, new tools, even if you've heard them, especially if you're from a yogic um, background or uh, arena, some of these things you may have heard of and never really practiced. Like I, the, the one nostril breathing that you did in one of your sensitive. So I'm like, I'm going to try that again because first I was just like, I'm either out of breath or holding my breath. And it's so funny because how you breathe is how you move. So I realized when I'm not supposed to be. So anyway, it was, it's, you know, all those things. And the more you practice, the better you get. So so hearing those tools, and we like to give you a tool, but also a chance to actually put it into practice right then and to, you know, make that something that you can do. And you came to our self-care, um, our self-care workshop and, um, you know, the, and I still get notes. Oh, yes, I'm doing this every day. They're like, where can I order a lacrosse ball? Will this thing go flat? Because, girl, I'm rolling my, <laughs> of my lacrosse ball or I'm doing this movement or you know and of course you know I played Lovely Day at that and of course I played Lovely Day yesterday that is just one that is one of the best songs ever it just is it is a positive uplifting song so I like to really think about the songs and the message and the feeling you know the frequency the feeling what vibration are you am I hoping that you can achieve by using this song and so so we, we, it is a it is thought provoking. It is an act of work and love for us to curate these workshops around um, around healing. And so we try to create the workshops around healing and not around wounds so that we're able to use them. So that is kind of how we work. I love it. I use my lacrosse ball every day, by the way, that you gave me. Girl, me and my feet, me and my lacrosse ball, my feet and my lacrosse ball are best friends. <laughs> I know. And, you know, in a word, I would say I would say, well, I mean, I'd say a few words, but I guess memorable, memorable is the word that comes when I think of body bliss, because I mean, I'm a yoga teacher, you know, that's not a secret. Um, But I feel like being a yoga teacher, like, it's like you almost need this stuff more because we forget, we all forget, like I could know a million breath practices, but do I practice them? No. And having, I mean, I do, but not... Not, yeah. not regularly all not, maybe not as much as I quote unquote should, but like having Lilani guide us in that and really holding that space, all three of you all holding the space. It's like, Oh, I can really just be with myself and I don't have to be in teacher mode thinking about how I would cue this. Like it, you just get to experience being with yourself and you don't have to 
you can turn off the teacher brain, I guess, is, is the beauty of y'all's event. Especially for teachers. And so um, one of the ladies who comes to our event faithfully is a bodywork massage. And she just wants to come and not do anything. And she wants to be the, the recipient. And, and that's her self-care. You know, I, I think that that is a very good point. I think that no matter what your skill set or knowledge base is or practice is like, again, it's the same thing about finding that edge or a new way to apply it or a new just. And if you can take away one thing that you can do for your body or for your spirit or for your or the one thing that you've learned for your mind, then you have, you know, then you're going to be that much better for it. And we learn from each other. And uh, one workshop, Leilani, gosh, she was talking and I just literally sat there and she's looking at me and I was like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing something. Oh my gosh. Like I had just gotten caught up in what she was talking about and it was just, it resonated. So, so we always um, laugh about like, I'm gonna have to take your class. Like, can you have someone else to do my part so I can just come and sit and enjoy. And so this year we've actually scheduled some, um, some events this year's self-care workshop at the end of the year. We just think December, by the time you've made it, getting ready for a new year, everyone wants to self-care. This year's self-care workshop, we won't teach. <laughs> we're going to bring in other people and we're going to uh, <laughs> do it with the people who have been with us. So we're bringing, yeah, so we're cur- curating that as we speak. So we're always looking to expand our knowledge and share what we've learned or share what we have learned through experience. So it's, um, and we like that. We like to, I, that's one of the reasons Leilani and, Dexy always asks me, they're like, Leslie, why don't you teach yoga? You have a yoga, yoga certification. And I'm just like, because I, that is my spiritual practice. I never want to be a teacher. Like I actually got the certification for knowledge, not for, to teach, you know, and I'll, they'll ask me and I'll say something. They'll both like, you know, that? I'm like, I'll keep forgetting because I don't actively teach you that. Exactly. Yeah. I just, that, that's it. That's mine. <laughs> you know, so I've been an elementary teacher. I've taught young adults. So I've done enough teaching and I continue to like to teach. But that yoga thing, that practice is mine. That is mine. Mm-hmm. So I just haven't never stepped out. And I've sub classes if I have to. And someone's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. But yeah, you'll never see me posting. <laughs> for yoga yeah um what are three things people um may not know about you and might be surprised to learn i think um of all the questions that you ask um i think this was the toughest one because i i'm you know, I'm I'm both an open book and pretty private, right? You know, you just and private out of probably embarrassment of some of the things that I've <laughs> done more so like, oh like, should I say that to people? If I want them to trust me as an expert or <laughs> you know. Um, but I am a pretty open book. I think as as a as a coach, you know, and as a person who has successfully helped people reach goals. Goal accomplishment was probably the biggest thing that I had to overcome. I am an excellent goal maker Mm. and project starter. So for the first 20 some odd years of my life, though, completing something, girl, bye. That just was not happening. I had all the plans. I had all the starts. You know, everything, everywhere in my house was started projects. So um, one day... I literally um, realized I'm going to have to finish something. And and so I had finished school. And so finally, like school was one thing that I would start and finish. But I looked around, I had my oldest daughter and I was just like, oh, gosh. Because <laughs> I had noticed she was like maybe three years old at the time. And she had picked up that habit. She would start cleaning up her toys and she'd get them all sorted like in piles and then just leave the piles there and they'd never make it to their place. Or same thing with clothes. And I was like, oh my gosh, of all the things that I've tried to teach her, this is what I have never actively tried to teach her. And this is what she's learned. And so that for me was like, okay, let's try to get together. And so then I, I learned better how to get things accomplished. And it just literally turned over and it was a uh, thing I had to really work at like okay I've started this got to finish this like and getting through and so I learned a lot about myself in that process 
And, um, but that's probably something that I don't tell people that, yes, I'm going to help you with your goals, but I used to suck at it. So I guess that's why I like helping people because I know how easy it is to, <laughs> to not get things done. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, one thing people probably don't know about me is cleaning, like physically, like cleaning house, wash, like not so much washing dishes, but like cleaning cabinets and cleaning the walls and baseboards. Like I'm that person. That is how I purge bad energy. Like, um, so, um, after the election, oh my gosh, girl, waiting for those votes was super nerve wracking. I couldn't do anything. But once it was finalized, I literally went through the whole house and cleaned. And then I got in the backyard. My husband's like, are you okay? And I'm like, his, and my husband's like, what did I do? I'm like, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm okay. It's just that I know that there's, tra- we, this is the winds of transformation, dude. Things are going to change and I got to get ready. So I purged all the badness, stagnation through, through cleaning. Right um, I'm about it <laughs> and I need you to get out of my way I need my daughter to help I was like this is my thing don't help me um wh- probably a third thing um on a lighter note I cannot stomach horror pictures I don't like horror films I, do. I just can't and I work really hard to not judge people who do like them because <laughs> me i'm like why do you like watching human gore gore like that like what's wrong with you so i have to really work when people say oh did you see the new horror movie i'm like (laughs) and why would i want to watch someone saw someone else's arm off for entertainment please divulge yeah i like how you say you try not to judge them (laughs) yeah i mean everyone has to have an outlet i find i clean you like to watch humans be dismembered that's cool you know (laughs) This for me, I just like, oh, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And that probably would have been a deal breaker with my husband had he, he likes action movies, which I can tolerate, but he does not like horror pictures either. And I was just like, oh, okay, we're going to make it because. Yeah. Yeah. So, ew. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> the things I can deal with, like, just pure, like, and they're already advertising for like Scream 5 that won't come out until next year. And people are excited about it. And I was like, is this the point where they just go around killing people? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, that sounds <laughs> funny to you. Yeah, I remember my teenager, she's about to purge. I was like, oh, no, I can't. Die. I told her, I, said, I don't think you would have to come stay with me to make it because she's like, yeah, I'll stay with you. I was like, don't sound fun to me, but whatever. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be back on the show. Where can people find you? I fierce fitness ATX. I have that is it. If you go to Instagram, fierce fitness ATX. If you go to Facebook, fierce fitness ATX. And you have to put the ATX because there's something else called fierce fitness actually in Austin, believe it or not. Oh, and so you have to put ATX and you don't want them. Okay. Uh, um, so I, I have no idea anything about them, people. I have no, I don't know anything about them. Um, also, I don't tweet, uh, you know. That has also left a bad taste in my mouth, so I don't do that. But on YouTube, Fierce Fitness ATX, I have a channel um, and um, Patreon. So patreon.com and then Coach Leslie. So that's what my um, site is listed under, but I'm there. Fierce Fitness ATX.com. That's, you know, Fierce Fitness ATX. If you can remember that, you can find me. All right, and I'll, I'll make sure to link all that info in the show notes so you're just one click away from... Yes, one click link. away. Thank you so much for being on the show. I love sitting down to chat with you, and we'll, we'll talk again soon. We will, we will, we will. And I'm so, so grateful for you for uh, talking to me again and, you know, doing this with me again. And um, I just love what you're doing. And so I trust me, I share not just my episode, I share all the episodes and I'm just like, did y'all hear this? Or have y'all listened to this? This girl is, this is interesting. I really liked your first one for this season where it was just you talking. Like I, I it's probably been one of my favorites. Thank you. <laughs> so, Manifesting fancy feast. Was yeah. That <laughs> you and your girl. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.